All right, Sophia. Hi. <laughs> Sophia, where did you grow up? Where are you from originally? Um, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, um, and I lived there my whole life. And I just moved to Washington, D.C. about three months ago. Oh, welcome to the East Coast. <laughs> Thank you. Tell me about your family growing up. You had both your parents? Yes, um, which I'm very thankful for. Um, my dad was a police officer growing up, and he, um, he was never home during the... Well, he was home during the day, but he was always asleep. Um, because he worked night shift and so I never really saw him growing up until he quit which was when I was around 10 um, and my mom during that time was pretty much like a, a single mom um, she worked a nine to five and um, she's definitely like Probably the strongest woman that I know. Um, I don't know how she does it. <laughs> um, you, had, you had siblings? Yeah, yeah. Me and my younger sister. Um, she's 18 months younger than me. So, yeah, it's like raising two little toddlers during that. How, how would you describe your childhood in general? Um, I'd say my I'd say it was really good, honestly. My childhood was awesome. My teenage years... Um, that complete different story. Um, ever since I was like 12 or 13, um, that's when things became really difficult. But before then, um, I my parents made it made my childhood so wonderful. I grew up in a really rich neighborhood, and I went to the number one school in the state which would later bite me in the ass but um yeah how old are you now i'm 19. you're 19. Mm -hmm. so you graduated high school yes well actually i didn't i <laughs> i say that because i'm so used to saying that um no i i dropped out um so when i okay so high school at first was great um I was a straight-A student, 4.0 GPA. That was freshman year. And then COVID hit. And sophomore year um, was bad, and it just got worse and worse to the point. I think I only did half of junior year. Um, I still completed junior year, but I only did half of it. Um, the other half, I was either in partial hospitalization, therapy, intensive outpatient therapy or inpatient therapy um, because of how bad my mental health was from a lot of um, factors. Like um, I was being, um, oops, <laughs> I was being abused um, emotionally uh, by several people in my life. And I was super hard on myself when it came to um, when it came to schoolwork, and that just became um, almost like unbearable for me. And by the time I was um, a senior, I, I didn't even go into school, and I said, "I'm done." <laughs> like, why, I, I why do you think you were having these mental problems? Um, so it all started when I was. I'd say 12, um, I was, it's always like an outside factor. And now I think my brain's, my brain is kind of like used to it. So basically sixth grade, I was bullied. And in seventh grade, I was fine. Eighth grade, my mom was diagnosed with cancer. And so that was tough. And then ninth grade, it was fine. And sophomore year, uh, COVID started, and that was by far the worst um, outside factor. You know, um, that was, yeah, that was probably the hardest thing. And just being a teenager is tough anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I went into high school with five best friends. We were all so close. I had, like I said before, straight A's and everything. 
Um, and I came out with no friends at all, um, super depressed. Um, I was almost failing all my classes. I didn't fail one actually, but like the lowest I got was like a D minus. So I was like pretty close. Um, so yeah. Do you think this is some brain chemistry thing that you just had naturally or, or is it yeah. something outside that caused it? I think, I think, um, I've inherited it through someone, someone, my, um, my dad has really bad ADHD and anxiety. Um, my, and depression especially. My mom has really bad anxiety and I just happened to get all of that. Um, my sister, um, of course I, I haven't really like talked to her deeply about this, but she doesn't um, seem to have those issues. And if she does, she hides them really well. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Sometimes it's just the luck of the draw that you, you ended up picking up these probably inherited traits and, and she didn't. Yeah. Maybe she's more resilient or something, but I'm sure you have other qualities that are great that come with these shortcomings, right? Yeah. Um, what, what, what are your strongest, what are your best qualities? Um, it's always so hard to answer. I'd say... You're a great communicator. <laughs> thank you. Um, I... One thing, I'm, I'm always eager to learn. Um, even though I did so poorly in school, um, I never try to waste my time whenever there's a new opportunity to learn. Um, I love history so much. I love philosophy. I just have this huge bookshelf. I think I have 20 books just on George Washington alone. Um, and yeah, but it's, it's hard coming up with those good qualities when people your entire life, or at least the teenage years, um, you know, said quite the opposite. Um, even like family members, you know, so. Are there things you want to do with your life? Do you have dreams of yeah. the direction you'd like to go in? Yeah, I would like to um, do something with activism or political science. Um, you're, in, you're in the right city. Yeah, exactly. That's that's why I moved. I, um, I knew that I had to get my GED and it's kind of interesting how I moved because my my dad and I don't get along very well. Um, he can be, like I know he loves me and I love him, but sometimes he can be um, what my, what several doctors and therapists have said, like emotionally abusive. And I, um, you know, with that, um, you know, it's, it made me feel really suicidal one day and I was like, I have to get out of here. Like, I don't know what to do. And um, I've tried to um, commit suicide at least three or four times, um, just between 17 and 18. And, um, you know, my dad made me feel so poorly where I was like, I have to move out and I may as well, if I'm moving out, I may as well move out to a city where I can like pursue my goals and stuff. So yeah, so basically- Is that why you left home? Yeah. And uh, my mom said, I'm not gonna help you at all until you get your GED. So I got my GED the day before I left and I didn't even tell my dad I was leaving. I think I told them like two days before, like, oh yeah, by the way, just sign the lease. <laughs> so you're in DC now and you're on your own? I have three roommates currently. 
one roommate is I've tried it's funny I tried to escape um, narcissism and I went right back into it with one of my roommates um, so I just um, signed the lease today actually for a new apartment um, someone's taking over my current lease and my new apartment it's a studio um, and I'm so I'm so thankful that I can have my own place um, it's obviously not the best place ever because <laughs> I I don't have a lot of money um, but you won't have that energy around you that you're gonna have to deal with yeah I rather work 50 hours a week than having to deal with that um, and work is so hard it it's nearly impossible because um, I'm still severely depressed and um, going to work uh, it's hard to even you know just like get up out of bed and obviously you know a lot of people don't understand mental health and so um, my boss would always be like well this is the last time like this is the last time I'm gonna like hear this excuse and I was like okay well last time I literally was in the hospital because of you know really bad anxiety and a huge panic attack and um, they just don't understand um, like literally no one understands which is so irritating were, were the suicide attempts your darkest point mm -hmm. they must have been that's a good question um, I think probably yeah I think those were also just kind of like spur in the moment because um, I feel like my whenever I think of like my darkest times it was just being alone just having a panic attack crying in my bedroom and my parents would hear me just like because I couldn't help like when I have a panic attack I can't help like literally screaming in agony and my parents rushed into my room and they literally had to pin me to the ground because I couldn't like they were scared I was gonna get up and um, find a knife and look, cut myself and do self-harm again um, so I think I still have I still have um, seven cuts on my legs right here from two years ago and they're still there Do you from cutting mm -hmm. yeah have you been diagnosed with like anything yeah um, I've been diagnosed with depression um, I think when I was like 12 anxiety when I was like three or four and ADHD was the most recent that was like a couple months ago but not anything like borderline personality disorder or anything like that I wouldn't be surprised if I had that um, but yeah I haven't I haven't been tested for that at all um, I've also noticed like just throughout the years it just gets worse and worse um, and I I'm at that point where I literally like I don't know what to do about it anymore and I'm thinking of like if there's like some sort of surgery that you could get like I'm down because like I just I can't do it anymore and it's um even the like these mental health problems cause a lot of physical problems too um I faint a lot from it's called POTS and it's like whenever I stand up I just bam I'm on the floor so I uh I recently interviewed a a woman who is a couple years older than you I think mm -hmm. and she was dealing with depression severe depression uh, Gwendolyn was her name I, I interviewed her like a month ago and she was using transcranial magnetic stimulation which yeah which kind of stimulates parts of your brain that are not very active and, and kind of gets 
blood flow or, or gets activity to that area, it seems, and it basically solved her depression like yeah. within a month and a half. Yeah, that's my mom is currently looking into that. Yeah, I think that that's a really interesting yeah. possibility for you. Mm-hmm. Do you feel misunderstood by like your family and most people? Everyone. Um, there's only two people in my life that I know um, that really understand. Well, I'd say three, and that is my current two best friends, Bridget and Sonia, and um, my mom. Um, family. Um, I, I think they're getting better at understanding, um, my ex-best friends, oh my god, <laughs> that was so bad, um, I, I was, they literally stopped talking to me because I was going to therapy, um, and just, like, ignored me all the time, and, um, then eventually, like, I finally like lost it after like five months like why are you guys treating me like this and then you know they'll like why are you freaking out like why are you like what's wrong with you like you know you're crazy and um so yeah it's just like and I don't think they're bad people I think it's just the lack of understanding what do you think would be the most helpful thing that people could do to help people like yourself? Um, with this? I think it's about what they do, but I think it's about what they don't do. Um, one thing, people say this so much, and it's like, treat others the way that you want to be treated. And like I know everyone says that, um, but I think... Because you never know what is going on in someone else's life or how they're gonna um, interpret like how like what you said. For an example, when I was 14, my sister was 12, I think. We we had to go to the bathroom and we were at the mall and we went in and the stalls were you couldn't see like the floor like it was like a door for the stalls and it said open so we opened it because like my sister wanted to use the bathroom and this woman who didn't even lock the door was like get out you little bitch and um my poor sister like she was so young and like she's never been called that before and i like it was just kind of like a hard, you know, hard, like hearing that. And little did we, little did that woman know was that less than an hour later, that's when we found out our mom had cancer. And I'm like, I just, I don't understand. Like, even if people could walk around and be like, assume what's going on in somebody's life, like, just like, even if it's made up, like, Oh yeah, her mom just died, so be nice to her. Like, if there's any way people can do that, because people, like, I get like people are stressed, but they're so, they're so mean to others, and um, I think that's the worst factor in mental health is like when you're not understood, but also when people are just like cruel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what would you say is your biggest regret so far? Um, so there was this um, guy in high school who um, had a crush on me. Uh, he was, his expectations were pretty low. Um, but I, I was just not, I was not into it at all and normally I would just be like no sorry like I'm not interested but I can't even remember how I dealt with it because that whole time period in my life was such a blur and I I dealt with it so poorly because 
I wasn't used to anybody having all of their attention on me and um, I was pretty shitty to him and eventually I, I called him up um, and I apologized and he was like, I just feel bad because he's been bullied a lot and I think he just, you know, was like, well, thanks for the apology, but also fuck you, you know. Um, I'd say that was my biggest regret. I've also had other things in my life, but I, I realized that um, those stem from trying to deal with trauma. Like when my grandfather passed away when I was seven, um, he was, because my dad was, wasn't home during that time. He was like my other dad. He was like my second dad. I was so close to him. And when he died, um, I just would go around school like laughing about it. Like I would joke about it with my friends and I could never forgive myself for that until I realized like, oh no, that's, that's how I process my pain is through humor and joking around and um, a lot of people do that. Yeah, yeah. And that's something that took me years to figure out. So. I, th I think that's a very healthy way of dealing with stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Because um, people are always telling me, like, you are seriously, like, the funniest person I know. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, well, that's good. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm hiding it well. So, but you feel, you feel like you're getting worse than not getting better? Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Um, and psych medications are... I take seven different meds. You do? Yeah. Wow. And um, constantly, like, they're changing it all the time. And it's so irritating um, because here in, in America, you, um, if the meds aren't working, you have to set up a med appointment and... I mean, the earliest you can get into that appointment would be like three months. Like, oh God. And I remember telling my mom, like, I can't, I can't do this for another three months. And sure enough, I literally couldn't. And then I tried to kill myself. So they put me into um, an inpatient hospital. And that's, I guess, the one good thing about being inpatient was that you have access to... Um, psychiatrists all the time so they're like okay we'll change your meds and we'll make sure like you're all good and you know we'll evaluate you and stuff do you have hope that one day you'll be free from from this yeah i do um i was just on facetime with my mom two days ago and i was just crying about it because i was like it's already robbed me of so much it I couldn't graduate high school um I had to I was like I lost so many friends because of it um and I even like I couldn't even stay at my house anymore because it was yeah it was my like my dad and I didn't get along but even just being in that old room that you know having all those memories constantly coming back to like oh in that corner I cut myself and I did the first time in that corner and upstairs that's where I was looking for pills to end my life and um after living there I'm like I literally can't can't live here anymore because it just like it brings back so many terrible memories and even walking into my high school, um, my old high school, I, I couldn't do that anymore. Are you happier now living on your own? Oh, yeah. Than you were at home with your parents? Yeah. Um, it's, I think what's made me the most happy is um, living in D.C. because I've always wanted to live in D.C. and it's honestly such a dream come true and um i didn't have that back in wisconsin 
and I want to, you know, I want to get more into politics and, um, and I feel like Wisconsin kind of offered me as many things as it could. Like I was canvassing because I guess like a good thing about dropping out of high school was that I wouldn't have had that political experience of speaking to so many people of different backgrounds and different ages about like the importance of voting and stuff and um it's not even like it wasn't about like whether you're republican or democrat or in between or neither like it wasn't about that it was just about like coming together as like a community and creating change and that was it was a pain in the ass because i was in milwaukee which isn't the best area knocking on doors and you know, people would slam their doors and someone um, threatened somebody else with a gun. Like, but it was just, it was nice to like have that experience. What's, what's worse, your depression or your anxiety? Um, I think, I think they're um, pretty much equal. But to be honest, I, I'm glad that they're equal because I feel like one prevents the other one taking over. Um, I, a good way to explain this is my like depression is so bad where I, I just want to die every single day, but my anxiety won't let me because I'm too scared. How, how do you if, you, if you do make an attempt on your life, how do you you typically go about doing that? So, the first time was like planned out. I wrote a letter um, to everybody. I took all my jewelry, I, I put it all in separate boxes. Like, this is for my mom, this is for my sister, this is for my friend. And, and then, um, I went to school because normally my parents would literally have to drag me out of the house and like, you're going to school. And this time I went willingly and they're like, okay, this is weird. So I went to the school and the school's right next to Lake Michigan. And um, my mom dropped me off and I was already late and I knew that I wasn't gonna be on time. And I walked, I was walking through the building and I was just like sobbing, but I was so quiet. And to the right of me, I could see this, um, this girl just like running, like panting because she was late to her class, like, and just didn't even like notice me. And I'm like, God, I wish I had that problem. And I walked straight through the building and straight to the lake and I was gonna jump in, but I, it was, it was cold. It was like December or something, but I couldn't, I just couldn't make myself do it. And, um, and then I looked at my phone and there was like several missed calls from my mom, just like crying, like, like, where are you, where'd you go? Because the school couldn't find me. And they basically locked down the entire school and, the teachers were going through like all the rooms, all the bathrooms trying to find me. And so they called up my parents and my parents were driving around town um, trying to find me. So. Yeah. It's, a, it's a frustrating problem because it's not, you know, common sense and a pep talk won't really help you, will it? Yeah. And people, as many times as I've, one thing I'm really good at it is reaching out for help. And I would talk to somebody about it and they'll be like, oh, okay, well, um, how about you just go home? And I'm like, well, I want to stay here at school because it's safer for me here. And they're like, well, you're suicidal, so you should go home. And I'm like, yeah, but there's pills there. There's a gun there. And they're like, well, you should just go home. And I'm like, what? And then then, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't hit them about like how bad it is until, um, until I try to commit suicide. And then they're like, oh, like, okay, now we get, 
how bad it is. And I'm like, it shouldn't have to go to that point for people to realize how bad it is. Do you feel like most people don't understand or don't, don't take it seriously? Yeah, I don't think people understand how bad it is um, at all. I think they're like, well, like my grandma was like, I'll just take a walk, you know, I'm like, that's not going to do anything. <laughs> like I take walks every day to clear my mind and um, yeah, it, it's no matter what you do, it, it's just like impossible to, to get rid of. And maybe it's not, but for now, when you talk to a medical professional and they're like, okay, so we can offer you three things. We can do IOP. And I was like, I did that three times. Okay, how about partial hospitalization? Did that twice. Okay, how about you go inpatient? Did that last time. And some guy asked me for sex in the hospital and they roomed me with this 50 year old, this poor woman. She was very schizophrenic. Um, but she would like scream at me and be like, you're gonna rot in jail and burn in hell. And I'm like, I can't, I just can't do that again. Like, how is this gonna help me, you know? What would you say is the most important thing you've learned, Sophia, in your life? Um, so I think just seeing how um, precious life is because when I was at my lowest moment my one of my best friends got sepsis and she was so close to death and um, I couldn't visit her in the hospital because that was during COVID but um, she was oh my gosh she was like unrecognizable and I was thinking like, okay, this isn't fair because like she loves, like she's the most like kindest person I know and she has to leave, but I'm the one who doesn't even want life anymore and I have to stay here. And um, I was like, this is kind of like unfair, but um, I've had like, you know, I haven't had a lot of death in my life, but I've had like significant death in my life. And every time I see it, I'm like, like, no, I can't, like, I can't, like, like they didn't have a choice, but I do, you know, and I would always feel guilty about that. All right, Sophia, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you. I hope you figure out a solution. <laughs> yeah, me the, too. The TMS sounds really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> That's the most inter interesting thing I've heard on, on these kind of things. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.